Hey guys, this is the EC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is some of the problems that you run into when you're trying to pump down an outdoor condensing unit. This is just a reminder to always make sure that you have your recovery tank and your self-contained recovery unit in the truck. A pump down is when you shut this liquid line down all the way, and then after that, when the unit's running, when the compressor's running, then you shut your vapor line down. So after you shut your liquid line, both the pressure on the high side and the low side start to come down. Once it comes down uh, into zero PSIG or down into the inch HG, uh, that's when you end up shutting off your, your vapor line right here. It depends on the type of refrigerant uh, per EPA uh, codes and all that. But I just wanted to show you what the problem is with the pump down on this unit. Now always make sure uh, that you have the indoor air conditioner on and the thermostat set down real low. This way you don't have to touch the contactor and you can control the unit from turning on and turning off just by having the disconnect itself. The reason that you want to have the indoor air conditioner on is so that the fan is running. Uh, when you do do a pump down, you want to end up having a heat load basically on the evaporator coil uh, because when you are pumping these uh, refrigerant lines down, when you get to lower pressure, that means lower temperature, and what you want is that you want all the liquid refrigerant to evaporate. So if you do have a heat load at the evaporator coil, meaning the fan is running air across that coil, then you have a better chance of pumping all of the refrigerant down the first time you do it. So after you get done the pump down, the pressure doesn't rise. That's what you want, that's the goal. You wanna pump the unit down below zero and you want it to hold there once the unit's off. And what we're doing is we're using quick connect test gauges. Uh, I typically use quick connect test gauges when I'm doing preventative maintenance or doing uh, things like this. And I'll also it helps just to keep the, everything in the frame of this video. So right now this outdoor unit's off, the indoor unit is on. Before we even start, I have my adjustable wrench on the service valve right here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and put this in and we're just going to make sure that we are able to turn it. So sometimes people have this jammed up at the top and we don't want, like when we're in a rush to say, close this valve, uh, we don't want it stuck at the top. Now we have our adjustable wrench on the vapor service valve and we're gonna make sure that we can go ahead and turn this service valve in uh, clockwise just a little bit. Okay, so that's fine. I like to have these uh, still allowing the refrigerant to flow through. Some people end up shutting the liquid line down before it even starts up. I like to get it started, let it run for maybe 30 seconds, and then I'll start shutting down the liquid valve. Once you shut down the liquid valve, the compressor is just going to be sucking in through the vapor side and pushing the refrigerant into the condenser coil. So on a condensing unit, you just have the condenser coil where you're gonna end up storing the refrigerant at with, when you have this valve shut off. If you're working on a refrigeration unit, um, if you have a receiver, then that's where the liquid refrigerant will be stored at. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the outdoor unit on. I'm going to turn it in clockwise now. And what will happen is after I go ahead and shut this all the way down, you're going to see both gauge pressures lowering. You can just see the, the threads must be stripped on this service valve. We can't even shut this two position service valve in order to pump the unit down. It looks like we're just going to have to recover all the refrigerant out instead. So that's the kind of stuff that happens when you're servicing HVAC equipment. It doesn't always go just as planned, but you always need to have your self-contained recovery unit in the truck and then also make sure 
to have a recovery bottle for the type of refrigerants that you're working with. And if you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech. And if you're looking for the tools and supplies that I use out in the field, then uh, check out the description and comment section below. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.